Asahi Productions, you tried to make the Monotari toothbrush scene. You really did try. <laughs> I hate when they use a stupid sus word. Translators, please stop using the sus word. It just, it, it angers me. I don't know why. Gushing Over Magical Girls Episode 5 was super, super wholesome, which I'm kind of happy about. I, I mentioned my last week's impression. I'm like, I knew Alice was coming up, and I was kind of afraid that the studio, which, yes, has been pretty much, has been really taking up a notch. Like, they're they're literally taking this manga, which, yes, is lewd, and taking up a notch. I mean, even this episode, there was, like, a few extra scenes and some added stuff in there that kind of made it more looter. But I was I was really happy they didn't <laughs> loot Alice too much. I mean, they did add extra assets there that weren't in the manga that does technically make it looter, but th they kept it pretty wholesome this episode. There's actually a few changes in this in this episode that I was kind of curious about, and one of the changes is due to the fact that they did skip, like I predicted, chapter 10, which, yes, hopefully they'll cover in the next episode because it's supposed to be like the hidden backstory of Tres Magi or something like that, which does sort of imply something in chapter 10, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, I actually wasn't actually planning on covering this episode, but I seen a whole bunch of changes and I'm like, I kind of want to talk a little bit about some of the changes and why in the end they don't really matter too much to me. But let's just, let's just jump right into it. Opening up the episode with, yes, the introduction of Korisu, which yes, I'm probably going to call Alice this entire video because I just like the Alice name better. <laughs> But yes, Alice apparently found uh, Venna due to the little kind of snippet that we get later. She apparently just walked up to <laughs> Venna and grabbed his tail and then boom, you want to become a magical girl? <laughs> or no, well, you want to be part of a, an evil organization or whatever. But no, it's like, I love the hell Utena is like, you need to get your standards up a little bit. You don't need to be recruiting people <laughs> just over stupid things like that. But no, Utena and Kiwi are told to go to the headquarters where they meet Alice. And I love immediately how Utena is like, did you kidnap a little girl? <laughs> what the hell are you do? You can't just kidnap little girls. <laughs> but no, that was kind of interesting though, seeing that whole scene where Korisu first meets Venna because they kind of imply something in the overall plot line, the idea that Venna is talking to somebody and saying, how are things going on your end? Oh, okay, well, we'll just observe. So it's kind of implying this idea. It could be just the idea that Venna is talking to another one of the people of the organization, but it, the whole on your side sometimes can imply the idea of somebody on, again, the good guy side, or the good guy side, the Trace Magia side. But I'd probably assume it's probably just somebody else in the organization somewhere else is putting something together and they're just observing what's happening. You know, I got a massive kick out of Kiwi getting jealous. <laughs> The Alice dress is super cute. She's the cutest thing ever. And Kiwi's over there like going, what the hell? I thought I was the cutest. And she turned around and said, you're super freaking cute. What are you talking about? That military outfit's super cute. Um, I love whatever you guys change. And Venna's over there going, yeah, I think out of, uh, between you and me, I think you're the worst. But yes, we find out that Alice's ability is to put people inside of a dollhouse and control them. I, this is where I got super angry because I kept saying sus. No, that doll, that's sus. Why are you chasing after it? It's sus. I told you it was sus. It's like, not only are they saying sus, but they have to say sus like four times. And it, like every single time there's like a side of me that's going, eh, eh, stop saying sus. It's not funny. But now this is where we get our first like kind of big change in the idea that yes, when they're inside the dollhouse, eventually Alice starts controlling uh, Magenta and Sulphur to become husband and daughter. <laughs> And immediately start climbing on top of her. I need milk. Um, but no, here's where we get a little extra scene because in the manga, it's just them climbing on top of her. And then boom, it cuts out to Alice being above the dollhouse. But no, the extra scene they kind of added here was, yes, the whole onsen scene. I don't know. It's kind of one of those things like it's a change that, yes, is more lewd. But at the same time, it's like, but why was this added? Because it doesn't really fit the scene. It just literally like transitions into an onsen scene and Azul's sitting there going, oh, maybe I was always their parent and, and, and wife. It's just to make it more Yuri and lewd and all that kind of stuff. We all know why they added it, but it's not a big deal. But no, that's when we skip chapter 10 and go to chapter 11. I won't mention what exactly is in chapter 10, except for it involves Azul. Now, here's what it's kind of interesting because of that skip, there is something that has changed that is sort of important, but not really important, is the whole scene where Utna is actually fixing the doll for Alice. The entire time, she's trying to get her mind off of what she did to Azul. So that makes sense why they changed the scene to Utna thinking about the note on the table that the mother wrote. So again, in the anime, she's thinking about the note, and then she's like, oh crap, I gotta focus, I gotta fix this thing. In the manga, again, following this whole incident with Azul, Utena's thinking about Azul and going, 
why am I doing this? Oh, it's because I want to be nice to Korisu. I want to do something good for her. And then she's like, well, no, it could be because I'm trying to forget about what I did to Azul. <laughs> so it's kind of like a an, a redemption thing. Like, I, I can't, I'm doing this in order to get my mind off of the fact that I did something kind of nasty and she kind of regrets it. It's almost like, a, again, it can be construed as something important. The idea that, yes, she is, she's regretting something that she has done to one of the magical girls and she's trying to do something nice to get her mind off of it. But now Leopard is super bored. She wants to take Otuna to the <laughs> Love Hotel again. And uh, yes, that's when Alice walks by and they decide to go to her house. Now this is again like, like that super wholesome moment. And I think they did the changes in this scene in order to make it remain wholesome, which is kind of odd. The idea that yes, they go to this house, there's a note on the table saying, you know, Alice or well, Korisu or, or Morino, hey, buy something for dinner. And so it's kind of implying this idea of the mother that's not around and the daughter has to do everything on her own and she's alone. And yes, that she has all these dolls in her room in order to, you know, keep her entertained. But no, they go into the room and there's a bunch of like raggedy old dolls. I kind of assumed at this point it was a, a, ca a case of Korisu like bringing dolls home, like she's finding trash and then she's bringing it home. And that was going to make it more tragic, but it just seems like she just spends all of her time looking at her dolls and they're kind of raggedy. It kind of made me wonder if the fact that she can apply her dolls to her dollhouse <laughs> or the chances that she could take like <laughs> Venna and put Venna inside of the dollhouse and make him like super powerful. Um, but maybe we'll see that in the future. But no, as they're in the dollhouse, I love when she sits down. It's super cute sitting in front of her dolls. She's so adorable. <laughs> but no, at some point, Kiwi grabs one of the dolls and starts getting all like rough with it. And the arm falls off. Now, here's an odd change in the idea that in the anime, Kiwi immediately apologizes. She says, oh, I'm sorry, Korisu. I, I didn't mean that. But no, in the manga, immediately Utena gets on to Kiwi and Kiwi says, it's not my fault. It was already raggedy. So she doesn't apologize. <laughs> it's like, I wonder if they just changed all this stuff with Kiwi in order to not make her into like a really nasty person. This scene. Like they're like, hey, we're animating Alice, Kilisu, and she's super cute. And there's like adorable little scene inside this room. And yeah, Kiwi kind of seems like a nasty person. We don't want to ruin her character and make everybody hate her character because she's bullying the lolly. <laughs> it's like they just did all these changes so that Kiwi is not bullying the lolly. Because that even extends to the later scene when she gets the other doll from the case. Kiwi's literally holding it up in the air above Alice and teasing her with it until Utena says, hey, stop it. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> It's like the, the all the changes in the bedroom scene is literally just to not make Kiwi into the nasty person bullying the lolly. But no, it was kind of sweet just kind of seeing how Alice is just kind of taking care of her dolls and Utena is like, oh, that's really precious to her. It seems like it's a special doll to her. Maybe I'll fix it. And then immediately Kiwi's like, you're, you're totally wife material. I want to marry you. But now again, the whole scene with the whole sewing is altered a little bit, but she fixes it, gets a cold and then comes back to Korisu, gives her the doll. And then that's when uh, Kurisu applies her magic onto Utena and turns into a super spicy scene. At the moment that it cut to the whole dollhouse inside the, the doctor's office, I was like, okay, so they figured out how they can loot, <laughs> they can loot Kurisu without causing an issue. <laughs> and that is just to make her into like this voluptuous uh, doctor and taking care of Utena. Another slight change here, Utena in the manga knows that it is the dollhouse. Immediately she says, oh, is this Alice's dollhouse? And in the anime, it sort of implied the idea, did Alice take me to the doctor? So she thinks that she's in the hospital in the anime, whereas in the manga, she knows that she's in Alice's dollhouse, which is kind of an odd change. But yeah, this scene was super spicy. <laughs> we had we had our Monogatari wannabe scene with the thing in the mouth and rubbing her around. It should have been a toothbrush. They should have done a toothbrush. But now the change they made with this scene, just to kind of loot it up, was the cream was not in the manga. So they added the whole cream part onto Utena. And additionally, a very, very interesting change is that, yes, in the manga, the syringe was a needle syringe. And she's like, you know, be gentle with me. And in the anime, they literally made it like a, a an ejection for elsewhere. <laughs> literally bringing it down there and doing the injection. I'm like, okay, that's a... Again, spicing it up quite a bit with that whole change. But no, it was sweet that Alice was trying to take care of Utena. And again, that kind of, it kind of bugs me a little bit in the how much they changed Kiwi because it really does feel like this whole entire segment is, for Kurisu, Utena is becoming like a really close friend. Like she just adores Utena. And that's kind of applies to the next whole scene where, yes, it's something they kind of shifted a little bit here is that, yes, <laughs> Kiwi wants... <laughs> 
<laughs> to use Corisa's power to make Utna into her kid, and literally she just locks her up. But it's still sweet. It's just kind of like that cute way to have Utna become very important to Korisu, unlike Kiwi, where it's just like full dominance that she likes her. And additionally, that yes, she thinks that Kiwi's cute. But yeah, I'm very curious what the next episode is going to be because, like I said, the title leads me to believe that it is going to be some sort of backstory for Magenta and Azul and Sulphur, whereas the skip chapter, chapter 10, is strictly just Azul. And I think what comes up is other characters. That's all I'll say. And so I'm kind of curious how they're going to shift things around going forward. It could just be Azul. That's what the title is for. And then they'll go right into the following chapters. But very curious as how they're going to shift things around now. Because honestly, it makes sense because we're getting to the halfway point of the series and they're probably going to want to start shifting things around in order for it to have a really good conclusion. And that's that could be what they're doing here. But anyway, I'll be here for it and uh, enjoy talking about it next week. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that like button down below, comment. Let me know what you think of the changes. Do you think they bother you that much? I, In the end, I don't think they bother me at all. It's just kind of like a good way of kind of shifting things around. Yes, you can make your own arguments about whether it should be overly looted or not looted. <laughs> um, again, the, technically the studio and everybody working on it has definitely taken this entire series up quite a notch. And it's for good and bad, depending on who you ask. But anyhow, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content and news, reviews, first impressions, top list if it's animates, pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips, links, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate what it does, and y'all take care.